So you're doing your stream, you're having fun, you're hanging with your community, then something like this happens. Messages in your chat about self-harm and suicide can be really scary and intimidating, especially if you don't have any established policies or procedures. You care about your community, so you're probably worried. You probably have a ton of questions about what to do. Now, most of these questions that take this here's from content creators come down to a few things. Should I take this seriously? What can I actually do and where do others need to step in? Are there best practices? Are there ways to manage the effects that comments like this have on the person, the community, and even ourselves? Let's talk about some potential tools to make it easier to help your community more effectively. Let's take those questions one at a time. And you know what? Let's bring in our friends at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. This is literally their expertise. And for best practices around how to respond to suicidality, they're one of the first places I go for resources. Should I take this seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Treat every threat of self-harm or suicidality as if it's legitimate, even if you think they might be trolling or they're only doing it for attention. But let's ask our friends at the AFSP. Doreen, why should we take every situation seriously? Well, we know that many people will give some verbal cues that they're thinking about suicide, and they often do it to people or with people they may not know very well. It's kind of like they're putting out there to see if someone will respond to how they're feeling. And it's it's we always take it seriously because it's a cry for help. It really is kind of letting someone know they're in distress. So we take it seriously all the time. Okay, so we're now taking it seriously. That brings us to problem two. What can I actually do about it? First of all, check with your content platform, your company, or if you can, a lawyer familiar with telehealth laws. These folks might already have some thoughts, guidance, or even specific policies in place for you to use. A worry we often hear from folks is, I don't wanna act like I'm a mental health professional. I'm a streamer. That's an important consideration in general. Licensed mental health professionals diagnose and treat mental health challenges. So let's talk about what that means. Essentially, licensed mental health professionals give a trained opinion on why things are a problem. They also give opinions on how to fix them. So don't do that. Don't offer opinions, advice, suggestions, or even speculate on where the problem came from in the first place. The good news is that these aren't the only way to help people. Doreen, if people can't offer an opinion, what can they do to help people? Well, we talk about reaching out or, or responding with a statement of concern and a statement of care. You matter to us. You matter to me. I'm concerned about what you're saying. Your life is important. You know, saying both something that is a statement of concern, letting them know you're taking it seriously, and a statement of care, responding compassionately. I think that's a way everybody can respond to someone in distress by making sure they have the right resources and the right folks to reach out to. So offering genuine validation and professional resources is what you can do, but how do you do it? And are there best practices? Build up a list of mental health resources as soon as you can and keep them on hand. Conveniently, we have an ever-growing list of mental health resources over at takethis.org. Here's the link. Oh, also, it's you know below the video as well. In addition to resources, there are a few strategies that different content creators suggested to us. The reason they gave different options is because the dynamics of your channel change depending on the size of your community and the number of mods that you have. One of the easiest things to do is create a chat command with a link to take this as resources that I mentioned before. Exclamation point resources is probably the most common chat command I see, and that was the first thing I did on my own channel. If the person making self-harm threats makes them publicly, several streamers suggested removing the comments from the chat immediately. This may sound like you don't care, but leaving public comments about self-harm and suicide in your chat might end up re-traumatizing other folks who have dealt with that in their own life. Another suggestion is to have a Discord or a forum that's separate from your public community, where you or your mods can privately listen and offer resources. That link can be offered to people via chat command or even by whispers. In channels with fewer mods, maybe you're the content creator and you're the only person who can do this, one suggestion that we received is to basically combine all of the above. 
remove the initial comment from chat, validate the person's concerns, validate their efforts to reach out, and then offer them resources, making sure to emphasize those resources as the best option. Stepping back from resources for a moment, we've already established that genuine validation before resources is an important piece of this. So are there any best practices about how to validate and then offer the resources? Doreen? Well, you certainly want to respond in a way that is calm, that doesn't respond with kind of, you know, that you're freaking out that this um, person has said this to you. One way to respond would be to say, you know, when people are feeling like this, it's often a sign that they're struggling with their mental health. And I'm wondering if I could give you some resources that you might check out to get some support around that. You know, just kind of validating that you hear that, that that other people have struggled and, and what they've found helpful is to call a helpline, for example. Validating that you hear them, validating that this is something that they can get help for, and then making sure that you give them the resource. So I guess this means we need to think about our strategies ahead of time, and if we have mods, let them know about these policies so they know what to expect. Absolutely. You don't want to be scrambling uh, when this is happening in the moment. You know, having the resources at the ready, even kind of practicing how you might respond in advance so that when this happens, because as you know, this is happening in real time and quickly, you want to be able to respond quickly as well. And, and you want to trust your gut on this. It's really important that if you're having a sense that, you know, someone is putting something out there where they need some support. You know, we know many people that feel suicidal are having some trouble with their mental health. And so making sure they get connected to the correct resource is really important. It helps set them on a path toward recovery. But how do we deal with the potential pressure of feeling like we need to rescue them? After all, they trusted us and reached out to us specifically, and here we are putting the responsibility for their well-being back on them. Plus, we may not ever know how it turns out. That's often the case that you might not know how it turns out. And you might be left wondering, did the person ever follow up on the resources? You may never even hear from them again. You know, but it's really important that connecting them to the right resources where they can get help is something anyone can do. And it's really the thing to do um, if you're not trained to treat this like a mental health professional, making sure that they get connected to the folks who can. It's an uncertainty that, that even mental health professionals experience, you know, this sense of that I, I gave this person resources and I don't know if they'll follow up with them. You know, we know that sometimes people don't follow up right in that moment, right? But they have the resource. They may think about what you said and they may follow up, you know, two weeks from now. What's important is that you've made that easier for them by making sure they have the right resources. And so, you know, we have to trust that when they're ready, they will reach out, but giving them the resources is definitely setting them on the path to do that. All right, this sounds like a lot to take on as a content creator or even a mod. This has got to have an effect on us. You know, responding to somebody who might be in distress um, can, can be stressful. You know, we care and, and like you said, we may not know how this turns out. And so if you're finding that this is taking a toll on you, it's really important that you have a way to kind of share that, whether it's debrief with someone else or, you know, reach out for yourself if you're finding that, that you're doing this often and it's getting stressful for you. Okay, to summarize, take it seriously. Respond with care and validation. Thank them for their vulnerability. Give them resources. Prepare your policies and resources ahead of time and keep emphasizing those professional resources. And take care of yourself as well. This is hard to do and it's filled with a lot of ambiguity. If you wanna learn more about the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, support the work they do, or find some specific resources on suicide, head over to their website at AFSP.org or look at the link below this video. Thanks to our friends at the AFSP for offering their time and expertise, and thanks to Rainbow Six for making this video possible. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and if you'd like to help us make more free mental health resources available to and for gamers, head on over to takethis.org and click on that donation button. As a reminder, we have a variety of free articles and resources on our website to help bolster the wellness of our gaming community. Remember, we are here to help you equip your party with support, community, and mental wellness. We'll see you with our next video.